What's going on, y'all? It's J Small Reviews here, back at it again with another video, man. Bringing you guys today another known battle record. And if you watched the end of last video, you know who it is. You see the title, you know who it is. And we are doing Charlie Clips' known battle record today. Uh, obviously an all-time great and someone who very recently had very good, one of his best performances in quite some time versus Easy the Block Captain, Block Captain, one of his best wins in quite some time uh, versus Easy. So I just thought it would be cool to do his record. Obviously, he has some big battles on here. He has some that you might have forgotten, some that you know of, but you, you might not even remember the result or what rounds you had him. So maybe you watch this, makes you go back and watch one of these old battles. It's classic to his catalog, but don't want to spend too much time on the intro. Unlike uh, T-Top, which we did last time, had five battles. Clips has six, so just one more. And obviously, being the vet that he is, his history starts a little bit earlier in the Gnome series. So without further ado, let's start out with Clips' Gnome debut. And unlike Summer Madness, where Clips was on the first and the second one, he only debuts here on the second Gnome, not on the first one. But he takes on a Midwest legend, something he was doing very early in his career, battling Verb on SM1, battles X-Factor, and then takes on Big T in his prime, not only is the main event for Gnome 2, but Gnome 2 was in Chicago. So he goes on the road to take on Prime Big T. And this is indeed Prime Big T. When you hear people talk about when T was at his best, he genuinely was a top five battle rapper in the world. And that's why he faces off against the Clips, who at this point had not taken a clear loss. Like I said, he had X Factor. He had Verb. The Rock Battle was before that. If I'm correct, this this was his fourth battle at the time um and it just goes to show you know how incredible clips was early in his career as well so you start out from the first round of this battle and for me i'm going to say it off rip this is one of the closest battle in either of their catalogs not because it's the most classic or the best it's a good battle but each round is just so so close and you look at the first clips is first is good in this battle he starts out rapping first and you know a little bit of entertainment bar for bar work too a lot of scheming like a lot a lot a lot a lot of scheming but this is the times that we were in you know what i'm saying it was fresh back then and big t responds in the first and his first is his best round of the battle in my opinion he probably is his best bar which he says early in the first uh i get a buzz from taking your organs out like operation which is crazy Um, and just kept pace and something that T just did better than uh, Clips at this point in time is just as a puncher he was a little more witty line for line Clips is always more of the entertainer he's scheming at the time which is which is elite you know it's not maybe looked at fully the same as it is now it's kind of a new thing so it is comparable in the first especially at the time there is a debate to be had but for me i thought t had more energy i thought he had the better peak lines um and obviously the crowd fucked with him more through the battle but you know he's in chicago i'm kind of expecting that so i had t overall energy wise and material wise up 1-0 and then the second but there was no problem with clips this first and then that's kind of the flip in the second where clips the second is just too good and this is where he has if there's any bars you remember from clips in this battle, it's probably the phone provider scheme. You'll never see T-Mobile again. which was super crazy his best scheme of the battle out of the 900 of them that he did uh but he's just punching back to back this is where he starts getting more into his bag all around he was entertaining in the first even a little bit funny landing a couple punches now he's landing with power now every other bar seems to be hitting while kind of also having that entertainment factor t second isn't bad it's just not as good you know what i mean so it's just Flip at the first. Thought Clips was good in the first, but T was just a bit better. I thought T was pretty good in the second, but Clips reached his peak. So I had it 1-1 going into the third. And funny enough, it's kind of the start career, start for some career bad habits in both of their third. What do I mean by that? This is psych lied Clips. Uh, and, then, and he actually has like a, a pretty good third leading up into the end, but you can tell he starts to freestyle around a little bit. He even did that in the second where he kind of stopped like crowd boos him and he's like oh what you don't like that it's kind of funny to see look this far back and be like oh wait clips was on bullshit back then over a decade ago 
so he ends his third on a double psych I lied, but it isn't the like like how he did versus Nitty, where it's a completely egregious, unforgivable round. Maybe it's just because it was a different time, but still a pretty solid clips third, but the door was super open for Big T in the third. I just don't think that he took it, because Big T's third is uh, full of a lot of sound effects, right? Gun sounds. Um, a little bit of, like, gibberish at, <laughs> at times, which is funny, because a decade later, Big T raps it, damn near nothing but gibberish. The man's rapping in cursive half the time. Um, so it just goes to show, even in their primes, they kind of foreshadowed what might be their downfall later. T getting a little nonsensical with the word playing flow, and, and clips just kind of you know, stopping and going and psych I lied and kind of making a joke out of it. So the third, like, like I said, it's the most debatable battle because one one they both have great rounds while the other did pretty good. And then the third, they both showed what they look like at their weakest kind of. So me personally, I did edge Clips the third, even though he's a little all over the place. And, and maybe it's a hard argument considering it's Clips, but in a round where neither of them really did much, kind of both showed their weakness, like I said, Clip still gives you a little bit more, a little bit entertainment factor, maybe a couple more bars that land. It's super duper debatable, but for me, I do have clips edging the battle versus Big T 2-1, and I have him starting out at 1-0 on his Gnome battle record. After Gnome 2, he is immediately on the next Gnome, and he's going to be on a few Gnomes in a row here. He actually has one of the longer streaks of being booked consecutively for the event. And on Gnome 3, we do have Charlie Clips versus B Magic. Now, this one is a key milestone in the career of Clips because it is the first undoubtable, unarguable, clear loss of Clips' career. But he starts off good in the first round of the battle. Um, it's his best round of the battle, I, which is kind of, uh, I, I'd say, almost like a, a pattern at times back then. I thought Clips, for the most part, always had powerful first rounds. And this one was no different. Scheme heavy as well versus B-Magic, who is a, a pure, pure puncher, right? In his prime as well. This is prime B-Magic, 2013. It's not... There literally is no better year. Magic's 2013 is like one of the best individual years in battle rap. And this performance is a big reason why. Clips is good and like I said, scheme heavy. He is the calendar scheme in the first. I dare you to walk through my heart. Let's say around June, trying to say hi. Them goons on the corner, cold as December. You better say bye. I brought a four, named up April. I hold that bitch yay high, squeeze April, a bullet march in June, and then he may die. He claimed, I don't even know if Magic's name is June. He said Magic's, I think he made that up after all these years later. Um, but the June, uh, he may die. That whole scheme, the way he pulled it off was great. And he was pretty consistent in that first round. And I think Magic's first is good too. But it is an example of puncher versus all-around battler. So archetype-wise, honestly, Clips could have went on to win this battle. But he just doesn't take it seriously. And like I said, at the end of the Big T battle, you get the double psych I lied. But this is really the first like disaster class. Clips not giving like full effort and, and kind of stumbling all over the place while magic turns up for the second and the third as well i mean clips is stumbling in the second kind of freestyling here and there overall it's just a, a dry round and then when you get to the third i mean he completely ends up tossing the third round of this battle it is all over the place i mean it's the first like i said the t example it's like kind of foreshadowing but the b magic example is the first example of what i like to call mr chuckles you know what i'm saying that's the version of clips that shows up like just <laughs> wait did you say something but no one said nothing that charlie clips um and magic just kind of kicks his ass in the last two rounds uh flying objects will give you a whole area 51 classic uh bring out another cr bad creation like bbd classic <laughs> Are you kidding me? I leave enemies stretched in the enemy death. No energy, energy left. Knock his noodles, reenact John Kennedy death. When I take his life from him like identity theft. You um, so many great magic punches in the second and the third. He's flowing, he's flowing crazy. Uh, jump around and get beat fast like techno. I could quote magic all day, but he takes advantage of Eclipse who's not fully applying himself uh, in this third. Um, and even Clips' next no, he talks about it a little bit, uh, where he said he had a conversation with his grandmother and she was disappointed in the magic performance. So first, not just first loss in the gnome record, first clear loss in Clips' career and leaves him at 1-1 through two gnomes. Clips' third gnome 
it is a little bit tricky because it doesn't actually happen the night of Gnome 4 like it's supposed to. It is the main event of Gnome 4, and to this day, even though it happened in the Smoke Lounge afterwards, um, I still will always count it as part of the Gnome series and the Gnome main event. If you don't like it, I don't know, watch someone else's battle record about Gnome. But Gnome 4, Charlie Clips versus Tay Rock, the rematch ends up going down, like I said, the next day in a really a smaller environment, um, and maybe that added to it because this is a super classic battle for both of them. Undeniable classic in the catalog, and for me, still one of the best known battles of all time, even if it didn't happen within that same venue. And, you know, redemption story for Rock, uh, you know, Clips still being in his prime at this point in time, and they gave a fantastic showing, and it starts in the first round of the battle, which is classic. I mean, both of them go fucking ridiculous in the first round. Uh, you know how I pay my shooter? A, uh, you know how an abandoned house be boarded up? I pay my shooter abandon your house be boarded up. DNA get the business like it's hereditary. Rock is smoking in the first. And then Clips goes, and Clips is first for Tay Rock, and is one of my all-time favorite Clips rounds, especially with the way that he opens it. Um, leading into the the blade travel through little rock that's arkansas the whole setup to that is really damn near legendary oh, but he doesn't stop there he does a whole other scheme with it arkansas little rock bringing the razor back um God, he, he's just wilding out in this first round versus Tay Rock. I love the way that he ends the round as well. Um, it's peak, so while both of them, I mean, it's an all-time first. It'll always be debated, but I edged Clips the first round of the battle. You get to the second round of the battle. And, like, you know, like I said about him and Big T, him, this and Rock and Clips is also one of the most debatable battles that Clips has. Um, it's just higher in quality being that flat-out classic. The second round, I do edge to Tay Rock, and it's another example of just... While Clips isn't all-around talent, it's kind of funny. In his career, he's got issues with some guys that are just straight back-to-back bar-wise just because there will be a round where Clips is going to be funny or Clips might just take a different approach and someone is still going to be going punch for punch for punch at you know full power because they're probably bringing their best shit for this version of Clips at the time. Um, and I just feel like Tayrock didn't take his foot off the gas in the second. So I had Tayrock edge in the second. So I had it 1-1 going into the third round of the battle. And in the third round, Clips gets a little more introspective with it, right? He's saying during the first battle with him and Rock, uh, it was attempted murder. But that attempted murder left you brain dead. And saying this whole battle is kind of an illusion. Rock's actually in the ICU in a coma, just dreaming of this situation. And in a way, it reminds me of Ilmax third versus Big K, where by the end he's like, you, uh, he he's like he wakes up and he realizes, holy shit! Imagine what's gonna happen to me at the actual event. And this is kind of that URL version of it. And, and I've always loved it because you know Rock is once again doing what Rock does punching his head off in the third round of this battle, back-to-back -back with the gum bars. I think he also, earlier in the battle, um, who's the legend? Beating me is what made you legendary. I've always loved that line from Rock in this battle. I just, when you got a battle like this, you got to name bars you like. But uh, if URL has a heaven, please make him top tier. Uh, he's, he said that Rock's mom had to wear an all-black dress just to watch their first battle. It's extremely hilarious, but still actually playing on a bit of a, a creative angle here, a bit of a conceptual one, right? So, once again, close, close battle. And like I said, all-time classic. But I've always liked that that different approach, approach in the third for Clips. While someone is having a legacy battle, owes you back a whooping, right? And he's he's punching at you. You're kind of flipping on him, going to a, an angle or a type of thing that, you know, Rock at the time wasn't capable of maybe writing that type of scenario. It's like an angle, um, you know, but there's also a little bit more of like a career breakdown to it. I just love it. So I've always edged Clips that third round of the battle. Overall, edging him the battle 2-1 first and third, and bringing his gnome record up 2-1. Here we go, our fourth gnome in a row now, right? We start out with gnome 2, close contested win. Gnome 3 for Clips, tough loss. Gnome 4, close contested win. Gnome 5, Charlie Clips versus Hollow to Don. To this day, I mean, out of all these battles, the biggest one, the one that matters the most, the most impactful in Clips' is a gnome resume, because of where they both were at the time, similar to like Big T and Clips, they were both in their prime. This is 2015, big, big stage headliner. Gnome 5 was a huge event, but 
you have clips and hollow main eventing at a time that if you ask someone who's the best battle rapper of all time both of these guys were were as equally as a great of an answer you know you could have the luxes and the mooks but in terms of guys that were still active in their prime hollow and clips were just you know it was a battle that many thought could kind of determine you know who do you think the best right now or of all time is it had those types of implications um and in the first round of the battle i it just it's almost like it ends early right because of one of the greatest strategic moves in battle rap history and that is hollow to don's kit cat angle in my opinion the best style breakdown of all time Shit whack. But bro, it's the same move every time you kick that. Set a punchline, set a punchline. That's how you spit that? Just a candy wrapper with four bars. You would see how easy it is to predict that? Now, why is it the best style breakdown of all time? Because it immediately made that room judge clips differently. You can just see it when Clips goes in the first. After breaking down his four bar setup style, I'll never forget the Dej Loaf punch when you watch the crowd. Like, you can kind of like see them predicted ahead of time and they do that for the rest of the battle for real especially in these first two rounds he just set a trap for clips where it's not even about what hollow really does in the second and third because while his first is all time this isn't like a great hollow to don performance all the way around his second is cool his third is not good but he just set a trap for clips that while he wasn't at his best it just made clips kind of like it made the crowd look at clips worse as the battle went on and kind of made clips get off his own game um Clearly wins the first round of the battle. Too powerful of an angle. Great style breakdown. The second, like I said, Hollow's decent. But he's not crazy. Like, it's a solid but beatable round. But what does Clips do? He's getting his bars predicted. He's losing the energy as he goes in his second. It's just not all that. And in classic Clips fashion, when it's getting bad, he can sometimes just double down and say, fuck it, let's get weird. And he starts rapping at other people. He wants to talk to Cortez, D Chambers. Like, D Chambers, come over here. Like, brother, this is Clips versus Hollow to Don. Fucking Gnome 5. One of you might be the GOAT if you win this. I don't want to see you talk to Cortez and D Chambers right now. <laughs> that can wait. But it didn't. He goes on with that awkward second. And to me, you know, this talk about at the time, especially after Eclipse does in the third, people try to debate the second. You'll you'll find the, the straggler here and there, even nowadays, that'll try to tell you Eclipse beat Hollow. Hollow was up 2-0, stupid clear. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, and I've said it multiple times in this channel, style-wise, I don't even always rock with what Hollow does. I don't like his second in this battle. But he just had too good of a move in the first that actually affected Clips' second with how good the first was. Just goes to show the strategist that he is when he wants to be. So he's up 2-0, but then the third happens, and you know, Clips said he's not leaving here with nothing. He clearly wins the third round of this battle. He is the, the Shang Tsung bar, we, you know, probably his most famous bar of this battle. Well, I gotta chill. How about grown man bars is something we got? Wait, that's Rex shit, right? Yeah, I'm bugging y'all for real. How about so? It's showtime, stupid nigga. I'm not trying to steal. I'm Shane Sung. I'm just turning into all the niggas I already killed. Your legacy. Uh, fantastic. Um, he has the sleepy hollow punch. He just has a few different things that are really good and ends with his best round while hollow's getting booed. He's trying to do a roasting session. The jokes aren't landing. Crowd ends up booing him. Just a little bit of those, you know, grind time-ish elements that sometimes hollow hops into where i feel like he shoots himself in the foot but he already won this battle beforehand with like i said you, you can't give you can't give enough credit to the kick cap bar and the way that it dismantled clips and really hurt him for a little bit going forward this was kind of the start of a, just a a rough spot in clips's career and it all starts with this battle with this loss and you know like i said it is a loss a 2-1 very clear loss and it does leave clips's record through gnome at two and two through four gnomes and now you got the last two battles here um that he has they are on gnome six so he it is going to be his fifth gnome in a row which is second all time geechee's about to have his sixth gnome in a row in, on a uh, gnome 14 versus fonds that'll be the all-time record but many people have reached this five marker and at number five on gnome six we have charlie clips versus ill will now this is one where I feel like uh, people remember some standout bars from this battle, um, particularly from Ill Will. I don't know if they always remember the battle itself. And if you start in the first round of this battle, um, Ill Will is powerful in the first. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you have the, why would I guess what room you're in when I can just blow your whole fucking house up? Crazy haymaker. Uh, and, you know, it's not in the first, but later in the battle, he is the D Rose. I hope your knees stay fucked up. All tight. Like, Will's got some crazy shit in this battle. That Kermit line was fire, nigga. 
But bitch, this me. Why don't I put this 40 on your lip then? Sip this tea. I just, I just... Easy to remember it is just purely a positive low performance, but I'm here to tell you, while Clips wasn't great, he's still joking a little on Gnome 6. It is at a point where people are starting to doubt Clips a lot. He's a lot better in this battle than most people remember, man. I did have him losing the first. Um, he even gets a Haymaker reaction for a, a callback bar. Like he's talking about the, I'll sit ill will next to ill will when I send him to Nas Mans, which is crazy, but he said it versus JC. He was kind of trying to reiterate it to get the crowd going, but they must have never watched the one-rounder with JC because they cheered like it was a brand new bar. Either way, I thought Will was just more powerful in the first, but, you know, Will's second and third in this battle it's not great, man. It's not great. And it's kind of funny because Ill Will has this like crazy, we talk about the, the cringiness of clips, sometimes like the cringiness of a hollow to dawn. When Ill Will is airballing, it can get very out of hand. He's in his prime now. He's been in his prime for the last, you know, four to five years of battle rap. I mean, one of the absolute best. So I think people don't always remember when it, when it can get a little weird for Ill Will. And I'm not just talking about the horrific pause bar uh, in this battle where he's finger fucking up can't even say it, you know what I'm saying, but for those of you that know, you know the bar that he said, but his second and his third still has dry spots outside of that, where he's just not landing that effectively, he is being extremely over animated, but when you're very performative and not landing, it can look even worse, and while while Will's kind of, you know, losing himself a little bit, losing a little bit of control of the battle in the second and the third, Clips is just solid, he's not like great, it's not an all-time Clips performance, but He's just solid. He's scheming. He's punching a little bit here and there. A little, little bit of a freestyle here and there, but also not like in the sense that he's lost or saying psych I lied. Like just enough, although he does ask DNA uh, for a line in this battle. Like DNA, where the fuck am I at? So it just goes to show Clips definitely wasn't on his shit all the way in this battle either. Overall, it's, it's somewhat of a lackluster battle, but I praise Clips to say he just kind of outlasts Will material-wise. Like, I end up edging him the second versus Will. Um, it's close enough, but, neat, you know, Will is starting to kind of dip down after a powerful first. And then you get to the third round of the battle, and, I mean, Will is having not a good time whatsoever. <laughs> By then, he's he's completely lost his pace. He has the humongous pause. Of the crowd is all the way worked against him at this point. While Clips has his best round in the third, it's not the craziest. He does... He will smith a motherfucker for seven pounds. He does use that scheme for the 80th time in this third round but for the most part he's still fairly more consistent bar for bar oh y'all want to die for will suicide squad who taking all these slums he'll go from dead shot to shot dead in detroit i chase him with the snub now it's the ali movie because they found will shaking in a glove <laughs> and just doesn't have all these crazy dry spots Will has. So although you probably remember the house blowing up and the D-Rose haymakers from Will, and that's probably what you take away from this battle, I did have clips taking the third pretty clear and edging the second round of the battle. So it's really lackluster, like I said. It's one of those battles that you remember the moments more than the battle itself, but I actually thought that Will wrote downhill and clips edged the battle 2-1, uh, getting a W on Gnome 6 that I don't think, may, 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 some of you may not agree, but I don't think many people remember the battle. If you watch it back, you may agree with me. So Clips 2-1, which brings him up to 3-2 and two so far on Gnome. And now we're here at the end with Clips' last appearance on the Gnome series, which was Gnome 8 in Houston. So his last one was the first one where they moved over to Houston. Um, and if you look at the matchup on paper, you would think that this battle would be one of the best that he has charisma, you know, matchup-wise. And that is Charlie Clips versus Briz Rothstein on Gnome 8. You're getting Briz at a point, too, that this is like right after, you know, the run from Pass to Arsenal to Ill Will to Calico on SM. So... This is a great matchup at the time. Briz had raised his stock that they could have this like high performer, that comedy aspect could be a part of the battle. But the problem is that it's the worst battle either of them have had on Gnome. It sucks. But it doesn't start out terrible, right? It starts out with the best round of the battle, which is both of their first. They're both very good in the first round of this battle. Uh, Briz, Chopped and Screwed Haymaker, one of my favorite bars from Briz. Not just in the battle, but just in general. I, I really thought he started out great. Clips takes the first very serious as well. It's a very, it's an extremely debatable first round. I personally edge Clips the first round of the battle, but, you know, it could go either way. But it's at a good pace. You would think that things would get better from there. But both of them jump off a cliff in this second. I mean, both of their seconds are, are horrible. There's no other way to put it. <clears throat> 
whether it's freestyling around like Clips does, you know, his, his fuck off round of the battle. Mr. Chuckles has entered the building, right? So he has that, but something that I don't want to say Briz doesn't get the proper critique for it because I don't want people like going out of their way to critique a battler. But Briz would have battles like this where even in his prime, he could get like very rambly and just have a couple of awful round or a couple awful rounds. He does it here. He did it versus Verb on the Rookies versus Vets. I know some people remember like, maybe remember because rookies versus vets was such a good event but that battle is not very good for briz um him versus shug probably a closer battle than some people would have expected him versus rum nitty like uh, obviously very hot building for those that remember but his second and his third are awful in that battle too and it's just an example of in the second he just gets too rambling like you'd have to watch it for yourself it just feels like he's just like aggressively like talking in a circle so the second is rough However, Clips, like, super didn't give a fuck in the second round of this battle. So I have to just, like, critique both of them because both of the rounds are awful. But if I had to give it to someone, I actually did give it to Briz in the second. But you could debate it for Clips. It's just a matter of, like, would you rather have a guy who's rapping, like, extremely aggressive and it just stinks? Or would you rather have a guy who's showing you, I do not give a fuck about your time in this round of the battle? So I had it 1-1. I guess you could debate it 2-0 really either way, right? Uh, But he gets the third, and it is the clearest round of the battle because Briz, Briz does not recover from that second. His third is very similar. It's just rambling is the best way that I can put it. Like, it's not effective punching. It's like disrespect horrorcore raps, but just you're not leading up to anything. It's just, it's nothing. <laughs> and then Clips actually has a pretty good third to end the battle as well. Let me talk to you. Then you, shh, then you figured, nah, let me change lanes. Because the insurance is looking better over there with Cave Game. I don't know if leaving that mob is that progressive, but joining Tay Rock Squad is the same thing. My nigga, stop talking before I paralyze you when you stop walking. Um, not like a standout crazy third or anything, but just has like a formidable round that I can judge and not awful. Like, it's, and just wins by kind of, once again, like the ill will battle, just outlasting his opponent material-wise. I don't have some crazy strategy. I'm not even bringing my best shit for you. But while I'm still going to write okay-ish stuff, you're falling off. You know what I'm saying? Your second and your third aren't good. So it's kind of funny because for all, these are definitely two battles back-to-back, Ill Will and Briz Rothstein, where it's not full-out, like, disastrous clips, but he's been at, like, 70, 80% effort at best, but it just feels like they kind of self-destructed in front of him, and even more so, the Ill Will battle, I have him winning, I know I've always kind of been the minority of that, but the Briz one, I don't want to say it's a clear W because the first two rounds are debatable, but he definitely, it was contested enough where when it came down to the third, Clips gets the only clear round of the battle, and for me, ends his known resume with a 2-1 win over Briz Rothstein, bringing his overall record on Gnome to 4-2. And And that is my full battle record here for Charlie Clips on the Gnome series. Uh, Like I said, called it 4-2 in the end with the wins. uh, Edge victory over Big T, edge victory over Tay Rock, also an edge victory over Ill Will and Briz Rothstein, but in significantly worse battles than the first two. And then obviously his losses to B-Magic and Hollow to Don are two of the more notable L's that he's just ever took in and happen to happen on this series. First loss of his career, first clear loss of his career with B-Magic and all things considered, maybe the biggest loss of his career versus Hollow to Don on Gnome 5. But overall, <clears throat> I think a 4-2 and two record is pretty solid, especially when you take into account the names he took and not just the names, but like when he took them. He took Big T at the absolute prime to take Big T. B-Magic during the best year of B-Magic's career. Tay-Rock during his 2014-2015 when he was finally making that final step into being the face of URL and, and the best battle rapper in the world. Gnome 5 versus Hollow to Don. We're talking about GOAT candidate Hollow to Don here. Probably the best version of him. And then versus Ill Will and Briz while he didn't get the best actual versions in the battle of them. Ill Will was formidable comp, and he took Briz at a time that Briz was considered in his prime. So nothing but prime opponents for the most part. And the crazy thing is, in half of these battles, Clips has a psych I lied, and I I still have him winning a good amount of those battles. So I'd love to hear your guys' opinion in the comments down below. 
Uh, do you agree with the record? And if you don't agree, which battles did I call as a loss that did you call as a win? Or, or more so, because I know how people are about clips, what battle did I call as a win that you have as a loss? Please let me know in the comments down below, man. Um, we'll have, I'm, I'm looking to maybe do two more known battle records before. I can't promise two. I'm definitely going to do one. I have someone locked in in mind. I know who my next one is. Um, but I'm going to maybe try to get two done before Gnome. Um, but like I said, you know what I'm saying? Let me know even who you would like to see. Maybe I'll change up who, I, who I'm doing for the last one, who you would like to see a known battle record for next, man. But it's been Jay Small Reviews again, y'all. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to catch you on the next one, man. Peace.